Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden channel on this cold winter's day and that is why I'm taking you with me to the inside because outside we have minus six degrees Celsius tonight which means the entire garden is frozen over. It's very beautiful to the eye though so if you're intrigued to see how the garden looks with a thin layer of ice and frost you can just go and see my Instagram where I've uploaded a couple of photos. You just find the link down below this video. What I want to do in today's video though is I want to focus on three different projects together with you. The first one I would just love to give you a little update on how my ceilings are actually looking because some of them they've developed extremely well and I couldn't be happy about the results but as it comes you always have your moment of triumph and you have your moment of tragedy and the zinnias they were definitely a tragedy. So the first tray that I prepared they were all looking stringy, leggy, they're lying flat, they're not cute in the slider. So what I did is I've done a little investigation and I prepared a second tray and they are looking really nice. So I would just like to give you the comparison of good versus bad zinnias, tell you what I did wrong to make sure that you avoid doing just the same problem. Then the second thing that I want to do, and that kind of naturally comes out of showing you the seedlings, some of them, they've developed so nice and well that they've outgrown their pots and now is a good time to pot them on to make sure that they develop really nice robust root systems and they can grow into really wonderful little plants before I plant them actually out. The third thing that I want to do, and this is something that I've already announced in my previous video, is that when I went to the garden center to pick up some pots, you know the feeling. You go to the garden center with something that you have in mind you want to pick up and then you see all these other things and yes that happened to me as well. So I found something that caught my attention and I needed to have it. It is a plant that is bound to go onto my veg garden. I'm really excited about it. So I hope you are excited to see what it is covered in the garden center. I've already prepared some seed trays here. So here's an example of plants that really excite me and that look really good which I'm going to show you in a moment as well but first I would love to show you how the zinnias look. So what I'm going to do is flip the phone and show you nice zinnias on this side versus not so nice zinnias on this tray here. Aren't they looking absolutely fantastic? No, obviously not. Just kidding. This is a tray of really bad looking zinnias. I mean, it's just a big tangle and a mess. What a shame, what a waste as well, but all right. I mean, sometimes you really need to do fail and error to know what went wrong. And clearly I learned it because the second tray looks so much nicer. Look at them. They start even with a set of first true leaves, one or two little stringy plants, but in general, all of them really robust, lovely, very sturdy little plants here. And the irony is that obviously I started these five weeks ago and I think besides one or two plants they don't have a set of true leaves. Well I started these two and a half weeks later and they are further ahead which means if you do it right you really end up with lovely plants. So what I'm going to do now is explain to you what went wrong on this side here. Let me explain you what went so terribly wrong with these zinnias here. So when I sow them, I follow the instruction on the seed package which said put your seed roughly one centimeter into the soil. I think I've done it, maybe not all of them, maybe some of them were just like half a centimeter. And then what I did is I covered the entire tray with a cloche because I wanted to create a microclimate because when you do your seeds and you know the feeling, you're full of anticipation. You put them somewhere, you check on them every five minutes because you think the second you put the seed into the soil, you're going to see something immediately, which is not the case, obviously. So I checked it, I think the first two days quite often, and then I kind of forgot about it, checking it. And after six or seven days, probably, I went there again and then it was too late. Because what happened in this microclimate under the cloche, all of them started to shoot up and then you suddenly have these really leggy, sad looking seedlings and that was definitely what I've done wrong. Second thing what I did wrong is, and this is something I read on a blog with other people that had just the same problem with zinnias, is make sure that your seeds are buried deep enough. And they recommend at least two to two and a half centimeters into the soil, which is roughly an inch, a little less than an inch I would say. And the reason for it is when your seed is very deep in the soil, the stem comes through some amount of soil and it anchors in quite well. Kind of how it works with a tulip bulb in a way. So you have a little stronger, more sturdy stem and I think this is why these are looking so much nicer. Also, when I put these into the soil, I put the tray on a very light and warm windowsill and I did not cover it with a cloche. 
it took, it took longer for them to germinate, but once they started to germinate, they grew very fast and really well. And I mean, you could tell the difference. Very happy with them, absolutely exciting. Checking always like how moist they are. Make sure that you keep them at a nice consistent moist level. Checking it now, I can tell you they need a little bit of water eventually. But yeah, they go back onto the window sill because I'm happy with them. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those, honestly. Most of them, I think, unfortunately, for the compost tea. But there's one variety that was Zaman, what was it? Yeah, Zaman Rose. They were quite pricey. And these were all the seeds I had. So I'm a little bit torn of like, am I on a salvage mission here and try to rescue some of them and just take them and bury them a little deeper into a pot of soil? I'm not sure. I need to see what I do, but I can tell you what I'm gonna do first is, I will show you some of the other lovely plants that I'm gonna pot on together with you now. Let me show you some of the really nice seedlings and how happy I am with them. So the first one, this is a red hat panacetum. The first time that I ever sow these and the germination rate was really well on them and they already start to color up in this beautiful grass color here. I hope you get a tell, it's kind of like a bronze red, rusty tone, wonderful, can't wait for them to pot them on. But I'm gonna wait a little bit because the roots are still very small. So with the next plant, this is something that I try our first time ever. This is hibiscus mahogany splendor and you mainly grow it for its absolutely beautiful dark burgundy red foliage. And you can already see here in some of these plants, they have their first set of true leaves and they start to tint up a little bit in a red. But again, I'm gonna wait a little bit with these because I wanna make sure that they have a good root system before I pot them on. And there's still germination going on in them. So I don't wanna disturb what just happens here. Next thing, oh, this is exciting. This is my Rekinus. I sewed together with you my previous video. Um, I mean, this really grows into a big tree in its natural habitat. It does not here, obviously, because it's not hardy enough. They've grown so strong and robust already, and the root system, look at that. Coming through this pot everywhere, so this is absolutely time to pot them on to make sure that they are off for a flying start. Just in case you don't know what Rekinus is, how it looks like, this is how it looks like. You really grow it for this absolute beautiful foliage, dark, kind of sinister in a way, really tropical. Again, first time I'm ever growing these, very, very excited about it. Had a very good germination as well. Next thing are my cucumbers. And out of them, I think only three did not germinate. All the others look really nice. First set of leaves, second one is appearing. I checked there are really nice roots at the base as well. So definitely time to pot them on to make sure that I have really robust and good looking plants. The next thing, that was something I don't think I showed you before. This is a climber and the name is very complicated. This is how it is. Kobais Gundens or something or maybe cup and saucer, maybe you know it. Again, something I've never grown before. I saw it in other gardens before though. They have these beautiful kind of like blue, kind of blue bell shaped flowers and a climber. Very wonderful, good germination, strong plants. They start to build the first set of leaves and I absolutely need to pot them on as well. What else do I have in here? Some uh, bell peppers. This is sweet chocolate. Um, yeah, they really take a long time. Like to germinate, they took very long and now they're sitting there for two weeks not doing anything. So I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens. Emma Rebecca cherry brandy. I mean, I love them. This is absolutely one of my favorite Rebecca's there is. I always sow it. Um, very good germination rate. They start with the first true set of leaves. Very happy. You get to see even that they are kind of like a little reddish here and there. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do now, obviously, I will start potting up my Rakinus, my cucumber. And that could buy something. What is it? Kobai Scumlands, together with you. The last thing that I want to pot up today is what I found in the garden center, and I'm excited if you are familiar with that. It is a pineberry, and quintessentially what it is, it is a white strawberry, which, according to my research, has been bred in about 1850 in Northern America, and it is a crossbreed between a Chilean strawberry, which is white, and there was a mother plant, and then a Northern American red strawberry. But since the mother plant was white, these are as well. So pine berries are white, and the seed on the outside are actually red. It is called pine berry because some people think 
that it tastes like pineapple a little bit. But then I read in blogs, just because it's white, people want to make it taste like a pineapple and it tastes nothing but a pineapple. Apparently when it's fully ripened, it tastes like the sweetest, juiciest strawberry you could possibly imagine. And I was so, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds really good to me. And I'm also intrigued by the color in a way. They uh, came already to Europe, I think, then in the 19th century, but they were never really successful. And I think the reason for it is because when you see white fruit, it doesn't really seem to be like so juicy or ripe, like a red, beautiful strawberry. Still, I was always intrigued by them. And now is an amazing opportunity to grow them since I have all the space in my new veg garden back there. When you want to grow them in your own garden, they require just the same things that any other strawberry wants. So definitely full sun, like most fruit and vegetables definitely want to have. A nice rich soil and this is all they want to have. I'm really excited about them. As you can tell, they come in this bag with a little bit of soil in here. So they are root cuttings. I could see, I tried to pick those bags where I could see little leaves already appearing. So some of them already have first shoots coming here, which is lovely. So what I do is obviously I put them in a nice good sized pot, keep them inside up to beginning of May when there's no risk of frost anymore. And then I plant them out where they're bound to go. I'm not sure if I'll be rewarded with fruit already this year, but if not this year, then definitely next year. You know what we're gonna do? I open one back together with you. So this is how the fruit is supposed to look like. White fruit with red seeds. Very intriguing. So let's see, let's open it. I think I picked one bag where I could already see a little shoot and some leaves appearing. So the plant really is supposed to look like a strawberry as well. I completed the leaves and everything. So let's see, it's a little bit like a treasure hunt in here. Oh yeah, that's nice. Look, it's very lofty soil on here, but you can tell. This is how it looks when you buy any plant out of a plastic bag. These are very popular in Poland, by the way. So I've got a really lovely root system here. Very nice. And then the tiny plant, so this is the crown. You can see new leaves appearing here. One, two, this shoot is already further apart. So almost leaves are coming. Very exciting, yes. I think I've got six in total, if I'm not wrong. So let's start potting up all of my plants. Potted up everything that I wanted to pot up, plus two red cabbages. They were the two that actually looked quite well, so I thought, okay, let's try it. Let's try it in a bigger pot. Rest of it, all of them definitely needed to be transplanted because I could see that the roots were coming through that natural fiber pot that they were in. I've done an entire video where I showed you how I pot on artichokes, so I didn't really explain how to do it. All you do basically is you select a bigger size pot, fill it up with a multi-purpose garden soil, Firm in your plant nicely. They all sit in this plastic tray so you could water them from underneath. I just fill water in here so that the pot can soak up the water and the plants get kind of like pushed down into the ground. This is how you do it because otherwise if I do overhead watering the first time what I do, I might just wash it away a little bit, the salt, and this is not what I want. This is the best way to do it. My strawberries, I think they are looking really cute in here. You can't really see a lot, but all of them have shoots, which is nice. Still need to water them in and then I give you updates obviously on how they look. 
That is it for today's video. I hope you had fun spending the afternoon with me in my kitchen. I'd really love to share this moment with you. And I'm happy that all of these plants are finally potted up. I was really longing to do it for the past couple of days already, but they look so robust and good, well root systems. And I think that they root in so much better in the bigger pots now. So all I'm gonna do is, I will carry those trays upstairs because there we have these big balcony windows. I could put the trays just on the ground next to the window so they get a lot of sun and I know that they will definitely love it there. So I hope to welcome you very soon in my garden again. Up until then, take care guys, bye.